Hey guys, welcome back. Once again, this is Ayfudin Ghanizadeh with another tutorial from tech for all In this video, I will show you how to configure the TP-Link 300 Mbps wireless end router. The model of the wireless router is TLWR841N. I will be using this device as a range extender to extend my current wireless network. If you don't know how to configure this device as a wireless router, check this video. Let's start the configuration. These are the pros of this wireless router. Now let me show you what I will cover in this tutorial. Let's start the configuration now. First of all, turn on your wireless router by connecting the power adapter to the back of the wireless router. Now, take a network cable, plug one side to your PC and the other side to one of the four LAN ports on the back of the wireless router. Now, open network and connection settings. After you have opened the network and connection settings, select the Ethernet adapter and check which IP is assigned to your computer. Right click on it and choose status from the right click menu. Click on the details button. Here you can see that this IP is assigned by the wireless router to my computer. And this is the default gateway of the wireless router. Click the close button to close the network connection details. To access the wireless router's login page, open your laptop's web browser. Type the default IP of the wireless router. You can also access the wireless router by a URL. Open a new tab and type tplinkwifi.net. The default username and password for the wireless router is admin. You will be automatically redirected to the status page. First, you need to change the operation mode. Select the operation mode from the menu and select wireless router from the menu because we will be using this device as a wireless router. Click the save button. It says that this mode is already applied. It's okay. Navigate to the network menu. Under network menu, you have four options. In the one, you have to provide the connection type that's given by your ISP. I have been given a static IP address by my ISP. That's why I have selected the static IP option. But in your case, it might be different. Select your connection and click on the Save button. The next sub-menu under Network is LAN. In the LAN setting, you can change the IP address of the wireless router. I don't want to change the IP address. I will leave it as it is. But if you want to assign a static IP address to the wireless router, you can change it from this menu. Let's navigate to the wireless menu. Under wireless menu, the first option is basic settings. In the wireless basic settings, you can enable and disable the wireless, change the wireless name, change the wireless mode, the wireless channel, and the wireless channel weight. And also, you can enable and disable the SSID broadcasting. The next sub-menu is WPS. In the WPS menu, which means Wi-Fi Protected Setup, this function will help you add a new device to your network quickly. If the new device support Wi-Fi Protected Setup or WPS and is equipped with the configuration button, you can add it to your network by pressing the configuration button on the device and press the WPS button on the router within the two minutes. The device will be automatically connected to your network. The next menu under wireless is wireless security menu. Here you can change the security of your wireless. The version of the wireless security is WAPA2 PSK and I am using the AES as an encryption. I have given a wireless password. Here you have another option whether you want to go with the WAPA2 enterprise mode or with the web mode. But I recommend to go with the WAPA and WAPA2 mode. It's a good option and also it's secure than WAPA2 
enterprise version and the web version because it uses the AES which means advanced encryption system. The next sub menu under wireless menu is wireless MAC filtering. Using the MAC filtering you can allow and deny some specific MAC addresses to access your network. Here you have two options. If you choose the deny option all the MAC addresses listed here cannot access your network. But if you select the second option which is allow only the allowed MAC addresses will be able to access to your network. Currently, the wireless MAC filtering is disabled. If you want to enable it, click on the Enable button and add the MAC addresses that you want to allow to your network. I don't want to use MAC filtering in my network, so I will disable it. The next sub menu under Wireless menu is Wireless Advanced. Here you can change the transmit power the bacon interval, the RTS threshold, the fragment threshold, and the DTIM interval. If you are not a tech guy and you don't want to break your wireless router, do not touch any of these options. Leave it as default. The next sub menu is wireless statistic. Here it will show how many devices are currently connected to your network. It will show the MAC address, the current status, the receive and send packet, and through which SSID they are currently connected to your network. The next option is DHCP. If you don't have a DHCP server in your network, it is a good option to use the wireless router as a DHCP. As you can see currently that this wireless router is being used as a DHCP server and it will assign an IP address from this range for each of the device which asks for an IP from the DHCP server. You can also change the IP range. For example, I will allow the DHCP server to assign an IP from 192.168.0.10 up to 192.168.0.199 and also the least time should be 60 minutes. The default gateway, the DNS and the domain name is optional. Whether you want to assign it or not, that's okay. After you have changed the parameters, click the save button. The DHCP server will assign a new IP address to all the devices which are currently connected to your network. The next sub menu under DHCP menu is DHCP client list. Here you can see all the clients that are assigned an IP address by the DHCP server. This page is only for your information and you cannot change any of the value on this page. To update this page, click on the refresh button. The next sub menu under DHCP is address reservation. Using the address reservation, you can reserve a specific IP address for a specific device and DHCP server will exclude that specific IP from the DHCP list and that specific IP address will be automatically assigned to the specific device. The next menu we will be discussing on is system tools. Using the system tools you can change the time zone of your wireless router. For me it's cobble time. You can change the date And also you can change the time of your wireless router. You have an option to update the time of your wireless router according to your PC. Click the get from PC button. The time and date will be automatically updated according to your PC. If you have an NTP server in your network, enter the IP and the time will automatically sync with the NTP server. Click the save button to save this option. If you are living in a time zone where it requires daylight saving, you can also enable the daylight saving and choose from which time to which time that daylight saving should be enabled. The next menu that we will be discussing on is diagnostic. Using the diagnostic tool, you can ping the devices which are currently connected to your network. Enter the IP address and click the start button. It will automatically ping the device and shows whether it's connected to your network or not. The next menu we will be discussing on under system tools is firmware upgrade. Using the firmware upgrade menu, you can upgrade the wireless router's firmware. You can only upgrade the firmware of your wireless router if you have previously downloaded it from tp-link.com. First, you have to go to tplink.com 
download the specific firmware for your wireless router and then click on the choose button select your firmware and then click on the upgrade button to upgrade the wireless routers firmware the next sub menu under system tool is factory defaults using the factory defaults you can restore all the settings and all the configurations that you have done the wireless router will be automatically reset and all the settings will go back to their default values the next sub menu under system tool is backup and restore using this menu you can back up the current configuration of your wireless router and restore it on another wireless router of the same model and using the restore version you can restore a previously saved configuration the next sub menu is reboot using the reboot menu you can reboot the wireless router and also you can schedule the reboot using this menu enable auto reboot currently it is disabled let me enable it I will schedule to reboot the wireless router select the days I want the wireless router to be rebooted every day except for Sunday at 12 p.m. After you have choose the schedule, click on the save button and the wireless router will be automatically rebooted on the selected days and time. The next menu under system tools is password. Using the password menu, you can change the default username and password. And it's strongly recommended that you change the factory username and password. First, I have to type the old username, which is admin. and the old password which is admin now i can type the new username i want to use root as the new username and i will type the new password and confirm the new password after you have entered the parameters click the save button the wireless router will be rebooted and you will be prompt to enter the new username and password next menu that we will be discussing on is system log in the system log you can see all the log of the wireless router you can also use these options to filter the log to emergency alert critical or any kind of log that you want the next sub menu under system tools is the statistics the statistic page shows the network traffic of each pc on the lan the last option is the logout option. If you click this option, you will be logged out from the wireless router. But first, it will ask you whether you want to log out or not. Click the OK button to log out. And that's all. If this video helped you, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. If you have any problem configuring this device, comment down below and I will get back to you as soon as possible. I will catch you on soon with another video. Till then, have a nice time.